Today we are finally releasing pork like. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. Ah, I've been waiting for this moment for such a long time. It's been a year since I started this tutorial where I was making this roguelike. Mm. And it's finally finished. Get yesterday I released the final game. Uh, so yeah, over the past couple of months I've been working on this. I've been trying to improve this. Um, I'm, I'm trying to uh, create my version of pork, like not the one that we had at the end of the tutorial, but like an improved version that kind of addresses the problems uh, that I saw myself in the tutorial version that we were making. And so, uh, but this took a long time because I. I got a baby and then I moved to China and a lot of other things happened, which I'm going to talk about in another video. Today I just want to show you the game, uh, walk you through, uh, show you what, what changed and why I made those decisions that I that I made. Um, let me see. Um, so one fair warning, uh, this game has some Things some there's spoilers now, right? Because I'm gonna play through the game and I'm gonna show you some, you know, uh, secret things maybe. And the game has a couple of uh, hidden secrets that you kind of get after a couple of uh, attempts. But uh, discovering them on your own is a nice moment. And usually I'm not a kind of like a big of a spoiler kind of person. But if you are the kind of person, like in this case, it's actually like something that I've been intentionally implementing, like this kind of reveal kind of thing. So if you haven't played this game yet, I would definitely recommend maybe uh, just giving it a, tr a couple of tries at least so you had like your own, you know, unbiased experience. And then I'm gonna, you can go come back to this video and see what I, um, see all the secrets, all the developer secrets. All right, so uh, let's start. So this is version number one uh, of this game. I like to number my versions very simply. Um, we made two uh, playtesting waves on the Discord channel, and there have been a lot of in-between versions for the playtesting stuff, but this is the re release version of the game. Um, at first glance, it seems very similar to the version that we had at the end of the tutorial, uh, but uh, it is very, very different underneath. So here of the bats, uh, big, two big changes. There are no longer any pots. In the, in the starting level and instead of the um, tablet um, there is now a chest with an item inside. Um, the pots are gone because I just didn't have any tokens and yes it got that close I had to remove these, these kinds of features and the stone tablet is gone again also because of tokens also it wasn't really doing anything specific in our case um, there was nothing like there's just lore on there and that's something that gets chopped very easily very quickly generally I remove a lot of the functions that are just display a text box that you can click away I just removed this entire function because there was no other use for it anywhere in the game so that's why you know uh, the stone tablets had to go um yeah right uh, also a small difference now in the corner you see there's um wait a minute is that the right corner yeah that's the right corner in the corner you see there's five health and you uh there is no maximum health anymore you can have as much health as you want uh because it wasn't actually doing anything um the only reason why you might want to have maximum health is because you are worried that some that there's a lot of healing items and you're worried that some if everybody takes all the healing items they have like infinite health but um, in our case, our like in this case of this game, I was trying to uh, reduce the number of health items so it's not as easy to heal yourself. And then if you do that, you no longer need maximum health, and that simplifies a lot of your damage math. Right. Um, everything else is still the same. Then this menu looks very different. This interface menu. There's only four inter uh, interface inventory. There's only four inventory slots now, and there is no equipment and no. Uh, so no armor and no weapons anymore. Um, the reason for removal of the armor and weapons is that... So I've been doing some testing and they didn't actually do anything. Um, so usually what would happen is you would just pick up a sword and that sword was bigger than the sword that you had before, like stronger. 
and then you would just equip that sword and then there was this awkward situation where you still had the old sword so you had to throw the old sword away and there was because also like why didn't it happen automatically because there was no, never a reason to hold on to an old sword right um, so there was this very complicated system that I did in a tutorial because it's kind of like part of the RPG schlock you know you're equipping stuff but actually the way it was implemented there those weapons didn't actually cause any interesting situations uh, they were kind of like just like you know manipulation of the inventory not really uh, any strategic decisions so everything is um, <laughs> severely reduced just to four inventory slots and everything centers around the inventory items and how you use them oops <laughs> i restarted oh yeah uh, also the subtitle is now worst comes to worst um and i chose a different subtitles to differentiate this version from the game from the one from the tutorial earlier which was um uh, quest for kyobasa i think <laughs> it's been a long time <laughs> Right, so let's pick this up. Um, when we open the chest, you see there's a bit of a difference. There's a whole system now where items can be on the floor. We tried to avoid it in a tutorial because there is a lot of shenanigans involved with, you know, what happens if that slot is occupied? Can you stack multiple items on top of each other? Uh, and if you can't, then the new item, if you drop an item at a certain spot and that spot is already occupied, you have to make sure that it lands somewhere else. Um, and I made that system. I just implemented that system because I reckoned there's actually I actually need it. There, there's a big focus on the items now, and it was important to me that there can be an item on the floor that you can pick up. So if you open up a chest, the item pops out and lands, and you can just walk over it and tells you what item it is. Um, the chests, uh, the open chests, that's a little different. The open, open chests are now. Um, don't block your passage anymore. Like you can just walk over it as if it was like a ground tile. And that's because I wanted the, tile, the item to uh, land on the spot where the chest was. Uh, if the chest was, because if the chest was, was not walkable, then the item would fly out of the chest and land on the floor next to the chest. And I didn't want to have this situation where, you know, you would want to open the chest from the correct moment because the, uh, from the correct directions. And so the item, you know, lands on a strategic convenient position. I just wanted to like be very predict predictable where the items land. Very long explanation in this very first room. Um, yeah, so um, the items now, um, there are basically different types of attacks. Um, that usually move you around something and move things around something. So here in this case we got slap. Um, the two behind the slap um, indicates how many times it can be used. Every item can be used twice, but items stack. Um, and so in this case, you know, the slap hits an enemy and then you also hop backwards one space. Um, and then it also stops the enemy, so the enemy doesn't move in that turn. All right, so let's go up the stairs. Um, there's some, some changes in level. You see that there's cracks in those walls now. Uh, we're gonna talk about this when we're gonna talk about this. Um, otherwise, not much has changed, I think, uh, from the tutorial version. Um, yeah, you can still walk around. Ah, there's a new thing. There's a saw over there, the uh, chains, um, bus saw. Um, that's a kind of trap that I implement now. We've been talking about this in tutorial and I was like a bit dismissive about this. Uh, I don't, didn't want to have traps because it's like, you know, you just don't walk over it. Why wouldn't you, why would you over, walk over a trap, right? Um, the reason that traps are now in, back in, uh, is because there is a lot of abilities to push enemies around. And this is like a strategy that you can pull off. Uh, you can uh, try to push an enemy on the trap. And so the traps are very, very obvious. One thing that I made sure is that um, uh, that was a, this bit of concern is that the trap is white, um, because usually we said like everything that's, that is interactable is yellow, and uh, everything that stops you is uh, uh, bright gray. And the problem is like the trap is not really like the other things, so because you can walk over it, so it doesn't really stop you, um, and it's not you can't really interact with it a lot. Um, and I wanted to like make sure that people like understand that this is different from the other items, that this is dangerous. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still like a bit of a weird exception. Um, yeah. So we now have three items. We have um, spin. Spin hits all of the four spaces around you. 
uh, and jump is very very useful jump uh, jumps to spaces uh, and if you jump over an enemy that enemy uh, won't move so it's kind of like a very strategic kind of thing we're having a lot of luck with the with the parity right now Ah, okay, so these are two uh, new types of enemies. So, um, uh, yeah, there is. I've changed radically changed all of the enemies. The slime is the only one that is still from the tutorial version. I think uh, every other enemy is different now. Um, the plants are new types of enemies that uh, appear on every, every floor. Um, they spawn especially in those plant rooms and they do not move. Um, there are just two plants. Initially, I planned four plants, but I kind of ran out of ideas and went out of run of tokens. So it's just like we have now two. Uh, one is the man eater plant um, there on the, in the middle of the room. Um, that is just like an enemy that stays there and attacks you if you walk. And actually, it attacks everything. It attacks enemies as well. Uh, and the other one is the bomb over there, or the I think it was blast tuber was the name for it I had initially, but now it's like more of a pumpkin. I'm not sure what the name of it is. Uh, that is gonna be that's, that's that one explodes and I'm gonna see actually if we can trigger it uh, yeah slap is a good one to trigger this yeah so I attacked it it exploded and uh, every time this one explodes it leaves behind another object so you can see like you get a lot of objects through if you use objects you can um, you can oh there's another thing that just happened you can uh, trade objects for other objects um, so now we used one slap and we got something else out of it. Um, so we lost one slap, but we got two uses from another object. So actually we won one object so that, that way. And here you can see that if um, that because of this thing exploded, it um, revealed like it destroyed one of the cracks in the walls. So all, all of the cra cracks in the walls are actually destructible if they're attacked by any kind of means, uh, except from bumping into it. You cannot bump into them, like everywhere, every wall, right? You cannot bump into walls. But every other means of attacking them will uh, destroy them. So that's the first spoiler. <laughs> If you've been spoiled, then well, you shouldn't have listened. Right, so this is a um, new mechanic, this is also a new enemy, that is um, the Worst Lord. And the Worst Lord is, um, is a bit of a timer, kind of like the ghost in Spelunky. Um, he will appear after um, 100 moves, I think. After you made 100 moves in a level, he will appear. And he will, um, he always knows where you are, and he will make a beeline to you and he has a lot of health. You can kill him, but he has a lot of health and the rewards are kind of... Not sure if it's worth it because he really has a lot of health. Um, right, so we got we assembled a lot of things. Uh, let's see, what can we use to... So this is interesting. So um, actually the only thing probably that helps us in this moment, we could try to do a lot of things. Uh, we have, for example, we have Smash. Smash is very powerful, does two damage and it also destroys every wall. Um, so we could use the smash, for example, to get behind here, but actually that wouldn't help us too much. So I think the best solution here is to do a jump. And we, I didn't want to go <laughs> next to the plant because the plant would attack me, the, the man-eater plant. All right, and that's that's basically that's the sport like now. Okay, so this is interesting now uh, because this is like what I was talking about, like this core feature that we had previously as well, where um, this is a game about Zugzwang. So now if I move forward to the slime, the slime will attack me and I will get hit. And uh, whenever you get hit in this game, you make some kind of mistake. The basic the the, the health points are basically your. Uh, uh, your leeway, your kind of like your your life, so to speak. Like whenever you make a small mistake, then you have to pay for it with your life. So it's not like other games where, like other RPGs, where uh, taking damage is part of the process. <laughs> Uh, this is taking damage is, is uh, an indication that you're doing something wrong. Um, so in this case, I want to kind of like, I have you have to use one of my abilities now. Either I get hit or I have to use one of my abilities to skip a turn because that's what every one of those items skips a turn in some way, but usually does a little bit more than skipping a turn. And you want to make sure that that little bit more is something that's useful to you. For example, I could do a slap now. I could do a slap now. I could do a spin now, just attack all of the squares around me, but that wouldn't actually do anything. Uh, I would skip a turn, but it wouldn't do anything.
Um, I think in this case I'm gonna do use a smash. I'm gonna smash this wall. Bam. Um, so I can now attack this guy. And this is a new feature. So I... Uh, and again, another spoiler. Um, so um, every level now has so-called voids, uh, and this is kind of like set up as a kind of like a reveal that you you know when you continue playing the game and experiment a little bit, then you eventually find a void, and it's going to be like this <gasps> effect, and that's what <laughs> what we just had here. <laughs> Um, so basically all of the uh, squares that are not part of a room, that are empty basically, that outside of the level, I, and I left them actually empty. So you, there's all those like voids, all those rooms that are not accessible from the level and you have to destroy a wall to get into them. And then every void has a... Um, and there is some treasure there. So either a treasure chest or other things, there is also teleported that, that you can use them. And a very important thing, every void has this, this part here. That's a door. I can bump against this to open this door to get out back into the level. And the reason for this is, first of all, like if you... Like if you accidentally destroy some wall and break into the void, I wanted I wanted the void to lead you somewhere. Like I didn't want to just like to be like, okay, here's the next room, and then you have to go back where you were. I wanted to be to leave this opportunity for the void to be a breakthrough to a different part of the level. So there's always if there's an entrance, there's typically also an exit, and the exit doesn't cost you any extra uh, any extra resources. So if you use like your last. Um, let me see, if you use your last smash to get into the void, you don't need another smash to get out of the void somewhere else. And the other reason is that um, you can in get into the void and again, spoiler, <laughs> and you can get into the void with a jump, you can just jump over the wall. <laughs> Which is a bit of a, it's just a bit broken, it's not, not an intuitive thing and it's one of those things that I kind of like, I could fix it. But it's fun, more fun with it. Like jumping is a lot more useful when you realize that you can jump over walls and jump into voids. And uh, you probably won't try it at first because uh, as a player, you wouldn't expect that it would be possible. Um, and so when it happens accidentally, it's gonna blow your mind like <laughs> And I really like that effect. Like, what? This is possible? And some of the people watching this now don't know that this is possible. <laughs> they've been just, they've been just punked. Um, yeah. So uh, if you would jump into a void, there would be this um, weird situation where you would be trapped in a void forever if there was no way to get out. Like if this was your last jump and you jump into a void and there, you have no way to break in the walls, you would be trapped in a void. Um, and you would have to restart, that would be very awkward. So I always make sure that there's always an exit out of every void. Once in every blue moon there will be a void that doesn't have a really good, good tile to exit, but in those cases it also would be possible to jump into that void anyway. So, And it's what actually very difficult bug to find, <laughs> because it, it would be very very rare for a void not to have an, a, a viable exit tile. Uh, also, I'm sorry, I, 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 I'm very excited about this release, so there's a lot of things that I want to share with you guys. Um, there is a possibility that you break uh, the wall that was supposed to be the exit. In this case, the exit won't do anything. Also, the, the exit might just lead you back into the room that you came from. So the exits are not always something that is that is, uh, that is that useful, but I just want to make sure that there's this potential that it leads you somewhere. Um, yeah, also there, there's a bit of trickery going on because the exits are not visible w uh, until you enter the void. So you have to enter the void and then there's a function that scans, you know, all of the... Uh, that, that checks what the supposedly, what the exit was supposed to be and then changes the tile around. So now it becomes the door. And just bumping into walls randomly trying to find the exit won't help. Uh, you actually have to get into the void to find the exit. Okay, so let's get this guy. So now we are full. Uh, this is suplex. Um, we have a lot of one-use items left, so it would be wise to maybe use one of those up so we can pick up the suplex. Oh man, I was worried about that. I was worried that I would open this and there would be enemies there. Ah, I just noticed there is a... The opening this uh, didn't, um, didn't reveal the level behind it. 
so this is a new enemy. Um, this is an enemy that we kind of had before, but um, now sh uh, this enemy works very different. And that's something I wanted to have from the get-go, from the uh, an idea that I had in the, uh, I, was, I was doing the original tutorial, but never got around to implement and I'm glad that uh, it finally worked out. So this, is, this enemy is called Slime Queen and it costs a lot of tokens to implement her, but I think it's worth it. Um, so she will, she has actually reversed pathfinding algorithm in that she will try to find the move to the spot furthest away from you. She will try to run away from you. In this case we cornered her, so she just, uh, we are lucky. So she is like, walks between those those two spots here. But she will walk away from you and she won't attack you. The only thing that she does is like every couple of, like every two turns or so, she will spawn a new mob. And that mob would fly out of her, uh, the slime uh, mob. That slime mob would fly out of her and then uh, it gets, gets very easy to get swarmed. So in a big room where she has a lot of space to uh, to flee to, uh, she can get get very tough. And a lot of playtesters were hating this. We had to like should reduce the, the uh, um, mob spawning algorithm to make sure that there's not too many queens spawned in a room at the same time. Like uh, more than two uh, queens was just like nightmare scenario. Mm. So what we end up doing is, first I had like a very complicated al algorithm that checked how many queens were in each room. And, and you know, that made a cut of like, if you're supposed to spawn in the third queen in a room, just skip that. But uh, that was costing too much tokens. So now I just change it so that there's, um, there can be only two queens at the entire floor. And that also makes sure that you won't have more than two queens in a room. All right, so this is getting complicated. So with every queen, it's always like a consideration whether I, you want to actually attack her or not. She's fleeing. Maybe I can use... Uh, I don't really have anything to... Uh, let's leave her be for now. Oh. So this is interesting. The uh, plant rooms are always very... Oh man, I will have to deal with this guy. I don't know if it's good. Ah, that's, that's a good one. Mm. Ah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now uh, I have two slimes surrounding me. I can now use um, spin to attack all of the four spots around me. And that actually did something new. That actually also destroyed the bus sword. That's actually a late addition, and some players were um, concerned. Oh man, <laughs> some players were concerned that you, um, uh, how do you say it, um, that you, uh, sometimes there were bustles in your way and you couldn't get through. And so I changed the bustles, original bustles were indestructible, but I changed it so that you, could, you can destroy them with abilities or by um, just like putting a mob inside. All right, so this is a problem now. I have to like get through here a little bit. Um, I could try to destroy this guy. So let's let's um, let's go with slap downwards. I could also do spin. No, I cannot do spin. I have to do slap. Oh man, look how many suplex we got. We are a suplex king now. To watch out because the. Um, Oh, there we go. Oh man, this is gonna be stressful because we 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 took such such sweet time sweet time. So the question is, where is the um, stairs now? I think it's gonna be there. Uh oh. Maybe not. Okay. Oh man, this is actually. I, I don't want to die in my game here. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! So many plants! Oh gosh! How do I do this? Oh, this is gonna be hardcore. I'm gonna get two damage, at least three damage, possibly. Uh, we could try to do... It's gonna... Oh, you know what? We're gonna... <laughs> oh, I jumped into the void right there. <laughs> Another suplex, <laughs> holy crap! Um, yeah. So now, interestingly... Oh, there are some cats outside. Interestingly, um, uh, this guy doesn't now know how to get me, so he stays put. Um, 
I, I preferred when he was like walking around randomly. That was some uh, version that we had before, but uh, yeah, things had changed. Okay, okay, that's good. Right, so that was a bit of a tricky situation. Uh, luckily, we uh, we prevailed. Uh, we have eight suplex now, <laughs> uh, but sadly not too much else. So we're gonna see if we can maybe use some of the suplex um, abilities to um, uh, um, to. So th that was a bit stupid. I have to use I had to use this to fix the the parity. Uh, to, let's see, we can use the suplex to get some of the enemies into the bus source. I'm gonna leave one pot open and in, if, in case I'm gonna fix uh, parity once again. Okay, so this is another new feature that was implemented very late into uh, actually with the result of the, one of the playtesting. Some thank you so much for the excellent playtesters uh, who pointed out this to me. We had a lot of problems with the levels being kind of like easy, like you could, um, like difficult, but you could get to the exit very easily. Like if you wanted to fight the enemies, it was difficult, but it was very easy to avoid the enemies, just like walking through the hallways and avoiding all of the rooms. And um, the procedural generation had the tendency to spawn the stairs uh, in a hallway. Um, and so it was very easy to just avoid all of the rooms. Um, so uh, first we changed the algorithm so that stairs always spawn in a room, so you always have to fight some enemies. Um, but also um, I also included like every third level, there's going to be a level where you have this um, this door. And there's multiple ways of dealing with a door, um, but um, the intentional one, as you see in an inventory, there is a key counter. So you have to get a key. That's not an item, that's just like uh, a drop. And you can see um, this enemy now, this slime here, this guy has a key. And so I want to have his... Um, I want to kill him to get the key. Oh man, look at the queens. Do we have something here that we can use? Oh man. All right, we have the key here. So um, this is, however, a bit stupid now because we are being chased by the slime and uh, there's no good solution here. Hmm. Let's do something like this. Uh, yeah, we can just spin here, right? Yeah, let's do spin. Okay, so this is one of the new... Um, Tiles, it's a teleporter, and you step on this, you teleport to the next teleporter. Um, this is something that you can sometimes see in a level generator where you can, uh, that sometimes two voids are uh, adjacent, adjacent to each other diagonally, and you can look into one void from another. It looks like a little bit broken, but fixing this, there was just no tiles, um, no tokens anymore to fix this. And with the teleporters, because the enemies don't walk on the teleporters by themselves, you can use this to often to just kill an enemy. <laughs> it's a bit of a exploit. All right, so um, this guy is following me again, so we don't get get to use our our uh, suplex abilities. Okay, so this is an interesting topic here. So you can see there is a new pickup there in the, in the corner. That's a heart. Hearts will spawn later down the line. Uh, I don't, didn't want to spawn hearts early in the levels um, because early you kind of want to have the uh, abilities and if you get a heart very early it's kind of like it's uh, there's a real danger of starving out the player like if they get a lot of hearts at the beginning they might not have the abilities to survive um, so I spawn the hearts later down the line when you really actually might be interested in hearts <laughs> when when you get got through a bunch of levels and made some mistakes um, but I had like the feedback from playtesting was that players hated um, that there was no way to heal yourself. They felt like um, it didn't feel feel good to them uh, because maybe you're from RPGs you're used to you know health being like this resource that goes up and down and it's like you know oh I got hit I get health potion whatever. Um, but I think there's also some more to this this and the fact that's the fact that. Um, even if you know that you cannot heal yourself, especially if you know that you cannot heal yourself, then every damage is really depressive. <laughs> it really depresses you because it's like you have five health and you know that maybe that's all you're gonna get through to get through the entire game. And if you're struggling with some of the levels and you know got you got like three hits in on, on level two, 
then you're just like ready to restart the entire game. Because like why why even bother, right? Like I have two health left. Like what what can I achieve? Like I maybe I, the high score I got was six, right? So and I'm already at two health on the second floor. I'm never, never gonna get further than six, right? Uh, which is not true, but that's how it feels. Um, so uh, what um, I decided a solution, like the solution would be like, okay, spawn more hearts, um, but then again, um, you might starve out players, they wouldn't get any, any items, because it's always like, either you get an item or the heart, or the uh, ability or the heart, and so there would be a huge danger of uh, ability starvation. Um, the other problem is that um, that would make like the entire game just easier overall. Not just the players who are struggling, but everybody would just um, would um, would would have an easier time. So even more experienced players would maybe just like leave the game behind because like bombarding you with all this health and all of this, all of this avoidance, all of this um, Zugzwang problems that that we are solving here would be like meaningless. You can you can just get hit and then just heal it, heal up yourself if if healing was easier. Um, so what we so I, what I decided like thought was the smart solution here is to give um, players a heart. Uh, every three levels um, so it's actually just two health points extra that you get <laughs> if you play through the entire game because it's just level three and level six you technically get a heart in level nine but uh, when you get to the floor to the exit on level nine you actually beaten the game already so I actually removed it away uh, because it felt weird to get a heart and then win the game um, so you get only just two hearts in throughout the entire game but that was enough I think that helped a lot for the players to feel like they're working towards, right? If if um, if you're if you got hit a lot in on level on floor two, then you can still look forward to level three because you t tell yourself, ah, if I you can just survive long enough to get through level three, I will get a heart, right? And that feels like you know it's not just going downhill, but there is potential to go uphill and even like a potential like something that you can even anticipate like not something that you have to get lucky for but actually that you know exactly that on floor three there is going to be a heart at the end uh, and on floor six and that was very important it's not really uh, it's one of those things in game design where it's not really about the numbers it's really that you now have seven health points technically not instead of five health points in the game but it's also the fact that um, like a psychological thing like players now uh, don't feel desperate anymore when they start losing health because they know there is potential to, to get it back up again that's like, I think like a very important insight right so uh, we are now at floor four and we're gonna see some new enemies here how are we doing we have a lot of suplex uh, we have jump jump is good Jump is very useful, but otherwise I'm not so fond. Okay, so this is an enemy that we didn't kill. This is Scorpion, we saw them before. Um, but they are doing now something completely different. Let's see if it works. Yep, it works. <laughs> so this is blind. And there's actually on player request, you can see now, um, it says blind in a countdown timer. 30, I have to make 30 steps now and for it to go away. So this is a bit has been a controversial feature and a lot of playtesters didn't like it and urged me to remove it, but I decided to keep it in because I didn't have any good alternatives. And also I think the fact that it, it, it annoys people is good. That's what it's supposed to be doing. So um, basically uh, the game is now structured in, uh, in triplets. So there's three first floors, they have the same enemies. Then the next three floors, um, the enemies are different, but you know there's a new set of enemies, and the final three floors are yet another set, set of enemies. So there's like three sets of enemies, and each set of enemies uh, lasts three floors, which felt kind of right. Like at, after three floors of the same enemies, you kind of get a bit tired of them. Um, and there's a bit of ramping up going on where uh, early on you get most of the enemies. There's like always two types of enemies uh, for every triplet. An easier enemy and a hard enemy. And uh, the, so the easier enemy in the first three floors that we just saw was the slime, and the harder enemy was the slime queen. And it's always balanced that in the early floors of the triplet, like in the first floor of the triplet, you probably only will see uh, the easy enemy, and then you, as you continue along the triplet, you will get more and more of the harder enemies. So in uh, the middle triplet, the uh, slime, uh, the, this, um, uh, 
Scorpion is the easy enemy and it actually is identical to the slime in, in the way it moves. The only thing that changes is this um, blind ability. So when you get hit by him, you get blinded automatically. And if you hit him, if you attack them, there is a 50% chance that you get blinded. Blinding means that for 30 steps, for the next 30 steps, your uh, sight radius gets reduced to one, and also the entire map gets uh, deleted, like uh, all, of the, all of the fog of war uh, reappears again. So you forget what, what you saw on your, on your map. Uh, the, it's weird that, that you do that, and a lot of players ask me what I, what I did. The, the reason why I did it is that if the map wasn't deleted, you wouldn't realize that you were blind. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, this is a bit of a different fog of war where um, uh, what you already saw you remain you keep the knowledge of what is in a map even when you move away from a space usually there is like a two stage fog of war where it's like things that you see now and things that you see previously but you don't see now anymore like there's like a gray fog over things that you discovered but you don't see anymore um, that's like this you know the, the, this World of Warcraft 2 type of fog of war. Uh, but this is like the old school fog of war, like in Dune <laughs> or Warcraft 1, I think, where, um, uh, yeah, when you, if you uncover something, you have permanent knowledge about what's, what's happening in that place. Even in, so, if there's a monster walking through there, you will see it, even though you're not there. But this also means that if your sight radius is reduced, nothing will change. You will be just like you will. Your cone of sight will be a small place in, within this bigger place that you already uncovered before you got blind. So you wouldn't wouldn't see that you are blind until you reach the edge of the of uh, the uncovered map that you had before, and then you will realize, oh, I'm actually blind. So I had to remove the entire map if I wanted to uh, to bring in my sight radius. And then uh, there was also discussion why I have uh, such a high timer. Why does it say it take 30 steps for this to go away? And the reason is that I had it way lower at the beginning. Like I started out at five, right? And it just didn't make any difference. Like you would just get blinded and then you would walk five steps and like you would fight the monsters in the room and by the time you finish with the monsters you would get you would recover immediately right so there was not like no difference so i increased a little bit but what happened there is then okay you would get blinded and you would just walk in place a couple of times and then you would be fine again so i had to crank it up so high that it would feel bad to stay in a room that you wouldn't you know, be staying in a room and waiting it out and you would actually consider you know just ah oh, just Let's look what's what's happening in the next room. Just you know, and so I so when I'm uh, my sight uh, returns, I will be ready. Uh, so it's supposed to annoy you. What I say is what I'm saying. Uh, you're supposed to be wanted to be doing something about. Uh, I do agree that uh, the problem with blindness is that you cannot do anything about it except running. It would be it would be good if there was another way to get rid of blindness, but. What can you do? Uh, so what the problem that we have now is that we there's a, another enemy in that room that we just uncovered. And we don't know where they are. So I'm just gonna walk away. Oh, we had, we were lucky. Uh, one thing that is good about being blind is that you cannot get blind at a second time. Okay, so let's see if we can... Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, uh, that's bad. I would love to use the su uh, suplex. So now I have a bit of a problem. I could use the jump to jump out of the to jump over the wall and to get rid get away from that scorpion. But I would be also maybe like the more aggressive approach would be to jump into jump into blindness into over the saw into blindness uh, to see what's there. <laughs> and maybe there's like if there's a saw, I wouldn't die, uh, and then I would have an ability maybe potential to. Uh, to um, suplex the, um, the scorpion. Let's try that. All right, that was bad. <laughs> that was good. I cannot suplex the scorpion, but at least I can kill him. Uh, oh yeah, that's good. A hook. Oh, even a hook does good. So let's see if we can suplex this bad boy. There we can. Okay. So people, playtesters didn't like suplex, they would find it most um, annoying. 
suplex is something I added very late in the game, so it's weird that in this playthrough we have these seven of them. <laughs> That's a lot of suplex. Um, so basically, like this bumping enemies into into sauce, when one of the early products was like a major feature. Um, and later on, you know, it got like it's one of the many features now that that exists. But it was like the main way of killing enemies was bumping in, in the, into into traps. And um, so I had a push, just a push ability, which I haven't picked up yet. But it just like pushes the enemy away. But it was very difficult to get enemies into the traps with just the push. And I noticed myself not doing it. So I added the hook, which helped a little bit. But push and hook weren't enough, like still enough. It was still difficult to get enemies in the sauce. And and so suplex is maybe the least useful ability, but it's really easy to get the enemies into sauce using uh, using suplex. Uh. All right, so like this. So you basically pick up the enemy and throw your, throw your them behind you on the other opposite side of you. And then it's so very easy to kill them uh, with the sauce. All right, this is a very slow pl um, and oh man, <laughs> this is bad. This is a very slow and methodical playthrough of, of Park Lake. Um, okay, so this is bad. So these are the um, the big enemies in this floor, and uh, yeah, so in this mid mid triplet, you all actually get them on the first floor already. So you know that's the thing to consider. Um, what I'm trying to get now, I'm, so I'm I'm gonna try to get this guy into the into the saw as well, because these guys have um, two health, and that's a lot. And so if I attack them, I get hit immediately as well. But uh, with the suplex, bam, you can get them into the saw. Okay, so. This is now really bad because uh, we wasted a lot of time. Oh man, if I get hit again, then I get hit again. Oh man, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was close. Stairs uh, heal your blindness. That's something that, that happens. Um, holy crap. That was. I got very lucky on the, on the ladder spawn there. That, that's a. It's a way to make up for um, for blinding me three times. Okay, that's good. Oh man, <laughs> now you lost my <laughs> track of me. Okay, so um, yeah, can we do something cool here? Oh man, what? Can I? I I'm hoarding the the abilities here right now. Maybe I can just hit some. Nah. I might just go upstairs now. I don't think there's. I still haven't found there's a chest on every floor, so it might be a good idea maybe to get a chest. Um, but actually, as you can tell, I was just like uncovering more enemies, and I actually had a good run here, just like uh, get, getting into the exit immediately. So maybe I will just like go to the exit. Um, I'm thinking of how to trigger the to. Um, to uh, pumpkins, but um, I mean, I could suplex. I could do like a crazy suplex thing. That might be. No, actually, I, that would hurt me, right? I couldn't. I, I also like the spear that, that we have there. The spear is a very powerful ability. I like it a lot. And so I'm thinking maybe exchange it. And it's, like spin is not very strong and hook is not very strong, but I have four of the hooks. Um, and I still have two of the spins, so getting rid of the spins would be difficult. <sighs> decisions, decisions. You know what? Let's, let's do this. Let's get rid of the spins. Who needs spins? No one needs spins. Of course, now this guy is following me. Um, yeah, whatever. That's right, baby. That's how you pork like. Oh man, there's more there. <laughs> Let's get out of there. <laughs> Let's get here. <laughs> All right, so now we got um, we got uh, spins. Uh, 
place with a spear. Spear attacks two spaces, one direction. Spear is actually a funny thing that had a... On release day, I found a bug with spear. <laughs> that was very difficult to fix because I, I have no tokens anymore. Ah, uh, man, that's Bolt. Bolt is good. But we are so full. So laden with abilities. We're doing a good job here. Okay, so this is a room with a lot of enemies. So I might actually... Oh! <laughs> There's a subscription happening. Uh, so I might actually jump away from them. Because this is like, you know, fighting those guys would be... Oof. There's even a... Let's just jump away. <laughs> <laughs> I even forgot that this was the third floor already. But yeah, first of all, yes, you can jump over walls. As I said, you can jump into voids, but you can jump over walls and get into the room that's closed off by the door. Um, and you can... Um, so if you know where it is... That was like accident that I just <laughs> jumped into the exit here. <laughs> but yeah, you can do that. Let's continue. Alright, so this is the third triplet now, and so we're gonna have a new set of enemies. So this is the ghost, this is the slime equivalent, and again, it's the same as the slime. There's no difference here. The difference that, that is... Oh, the, there's no mechanical difference, I guess. The only difference is that, that sometimes the ghost disappears. <laughs> and there's like some rules on, you know, how when it disappears and what the percentage is, but it, he's now invisible to us. Uh, he always reappears when he's next to you, so like you never have a, like invisible ghost right next to you attacking you from nowhere. You will always know when you get attacked. Uh, but if the, the ghost is further away, he will just disappear. And also the ghost will re reappear when he doesn't know where you are. So you cannot just like blindly walk into the ghost somewhere uh, uh, sitting in a hallway. Uh, but yeah, so now you have to like kind of memorize where the ghosts are and you have to like keep track of where they are. So I know now that he's two spaces away. So I think it's safe for me to move in, yeah. So now, the, that's the bad ghost. You know, he's one space away, and so I have to do something now. Uh, right. Right, can we... Yeah, that's good, right? So I can just like go there. And I can't, I can't, bam. Um, I'm, I'm hoarding all of the abilities, and, but I haven't found a good way to use the hook yet. Okay, this is a dangerous enemy. So this is the difficult enemy from the um, final triplet. And that is a... I, I think the official name in the game is Kong. Uh, it's, it's a gorilla kind of um, enemy. So he um, can lunge at you in, in a straight line. When he, there's a straight line between you and, and him, then he can jump at you and land at your feet and then hit you immediately in the same move. Very, very powerful. You can immediately counterattack, and he only has one health, so it's, it's kind of like easy to defeat, but there's a good chance that he will do damage to you. Uh, so it's not as difficult as the, as the, as the golems in this, on a second triplet. But um, he is a. Uh, he. Um, there is a potential, if you don't know what, how he works, there's potential to just insta kill you. And that, that's why I had him. Uh, that, now, okay. <laughs> it's very anticlimactic, I'm sorry. It seems like I'm cheating. See? So if I made a step forward now, I would definitely get hit. Uh, and if I make a step sideways, he will probably jump at me, but he won't, won't get me. There we go. So he. Um, I went away. Uh, he remembered my position still, so he jumped at a position where I was, but I moved so he didn't, didn't hit me. Uh, right. So what are we going to do here? Huh? Let's spear him. And then we can spear this. And grab a jump. And we can j grab the bolt here. Oh, ghosty. Maybe we can suplex a ghost, how about that, huh? That would be fun. So let's bolt the ghost. And then let's try to suplex the ghost. BAM! Another hook. <laughs> can we get the ghost hooked? No, I, don't, I guess we can't. Well, 
And I'm gonna start the hooks. Just start using up all of the suplexes. Suplex I. Alright. Another jump. That's good. Jump that's strong. <gasps> oh no! Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. I was thinking about uh, decreasing uh, the time to for Slothord, uh, the Slothord, the Worst Lord to appear. But I just decided against it. Maybe, maybe in a future update, if, if it's, the game proves to be too easy. Wow, that's a weird spawn here, right here. All right, a bunch of ghosts. Should we do this? Yeah, I don't see the... Oh man, <laughs> there's a gorilla. <laughs> I just want to say it. Oh, I don't see a gorilla, it's gonna be fine. Oh man. What a hubris. Let's get, let's get out of here. Oh man, there's still ghosts following me. I lost track of where the ghosts are. Okay, there's one one spot away. Let's just hook him in. The hooks are very easy. Like hooks is people don't like the hooks, the playtests didn't like the hooks, but they're actually the thing that when you know when reviewers and playtesters they always like complain like oh where's the uh, ability to just skip a turn why don't you just make it an ability to skip a turn and that's basically what a hook does it just hooks in an enemy that's one spot away <laughs> and you can just attack them but somehow like there's some kind of aversion in people to use the abilities they don't want to hoard them and that's understandable like <laughs> you can tell that <laughs> bit of a hoarder myself. Um, so this is something that comes up in the later levels. I made sure that it only happens in the later levels because again this might starve players out of abilities but sometimes you will get a teleporter in the late, later levels. Like I think above floor five there's a low chance that it will happen. But you will get a teleporter inside the level instead of the chest. Uh, and that teleporter will teleport you into a void. And that's kind of how I made sure that even if the player is not very experimental with their abilities, uh, that they still can find out that voids exist. And that makes them maybe think about. So I, again, so the voids are kind of like this big reveal. And that's the reason why I wanted you guys not to um, watch this uh, playthrough if you, um, if you haven't played the game. So like, because this is something I actually set up and made sure that that people discover. And the reviews were positive across the board when that's concerned. Like everybody loves discovering uh, the voids. All right, so this seems good. That was an easy ending. Um, yeah, we're not gonna get to that teleporter. I think that would need to, we have to fight the the gorilla and I think we have we have six jumps it's gonna be fine all right so this is the final floor <laughs> ah see I got a heart so instead of a uh, elite I got a heart and you think that uh, because a lot of you players think oh where's the healing I need the healing hearts are so good um, but actually heart is the worst of the abilities um, so uh, just some strategical thinking um, so if you can't, like, usually you have the Tsuk-san problem, where you are one space away from a monster. If you move into that space, you get attacked. So, um, moving one space is, is basically worth one health point, right? Like, uh, being able to, to wait for a turn is kind of like the same as getting attacked by a monster. Right? Because getting attacked by a monster, you use one health, and waiting, you avoid that. So, moving one step is kind of like equal to... Uh, to losing one health but all of the abilities usually do a little bit more than just doing nothing right so for example bolt where it's like you shoot something a projectile and you hit something for one damage and you also don't move so you it's almost like two uh, so, so somewhere between one and uh, like more several definitely more than one one and a half and with one one and a half and two health points is the value of each of those abilities and uh and so getting hard is actually getting really bad abilities <laughs> um it just it just feels better to have a lot of health um, all right so this is bad now we have like two gorillas here or two kongs and they will definitely so if i go one step i will get attacked off, uh, for sure right like he will just jump at me um, but if I go back, okay, I still have enough room to go away. Um, yeah, let's go like here. Okay, he doesn't see me anymore. That's fine for me. 
Okay, so, ah, okay, yeah, we, uh, here's the enemy with a key. Do I have anything I can shoot with? No. Let's make him jump in here. Um, yeah, I mean, we have hooks. Let's just waste the hook and attack him. I don't like the places where you waste abilities on nothing. Um, and so that's definitely something that I would want to fix if I had time or tokens to improve the game. To give, like, for example, uh, things you can do with hook. A little bit more things you can do with hook. Oh man, this, this was a very wasteful kill. I might not be able... Oh man, what? Uh, I knew it. I, I, I lost track of the ghost. I forgot where it was. But, you know, I, I have plenty of health now. It's fine. It's gonna be fine. And that's the Kyobasa, everybody. <laughs> that's how you win at Pork Leg. Um, yeah, so this is Pork Leg. Um, I actually didn't die. <laughs> so I want to uh, show you the, kill, uh, the death screen as well. So there's an, one last feature that I haven't actually disclosed to my, uh, or didn't talk about um, with my playtesters. We haven't playtested this feature yet. So uh, you see there is a worst chain at the bottom. Um, that is because you got one sausage now because you played through the game. And so you, um, like, the, we have this problem, like, once you beat the game, there's no really good reason to play, continue playing the game. There's, like, nothing more you can do out of this. So to just get a little bit more in to get give players who really like the game want to continue playing it uh, an excuse to do so. I, uh, I include this voice chain, which is, I think, uh, Michael Bro games have, have this quite a lot, which is kind of like a streak. So the challenge now becomes not just to get through this uh, sausage, but to get multiple sausage in a row without dying in between. Now, that's, this would be quite a challenge if you had to do it, you know, without closing the game. So actually, now the game has saved. So, um, at, le at least the voice chain has saved. So, right now, if I close the game and reopen it, I would still have one voice chain. Um, this will disappear once you open the chest. So once I open the chest, you know, I'm committed to the next run. And so once I open the chest, you will see the color will change. And once I open the chest, um, uh, if then I close the game and reopen it, I will be back to zero. So it's, it's as if I died. And the reason for this is there's kind of like an additional challenge here because um, the chest here is at the beginning of the level, right? So you could technically restart the game to get the best starting item. Um, which I thought was a fine, like, it's, it saves me from making a selection screen, because that might be also a good thing to do, like, to uh, select which item you want to start, like, a start equipment. Um, but I didn't have any tokens to do that kind of stuff. So this is kind of like a pseudo select screen, so you can restart the game to get, like, additional advantage. Um, but you don't get that advantage anymore once you get the worst chain. So once you open the chest and you know what's inside, you know your starter item, you are committed to that run. Um, yeah. So yeah, if I pick it up, you know, the color changes, so to indicate that now you're committed. Uh, spear is a great starting item anyway. And so yeah, now when when we're inside, I want to uh, get get killed because I wanted to also talk about one last thing. So yeah, uh, I want to show you this as well. This this like a little illustration I did. Um, initially, I wanted to have like in a in a starting in a prototype I had this thing where uh, I had a line that describes what killed you but implementing that cost a lot of tokens uh, and I got or let, let's put the other way around removing that saved a lot of tokens <laughs> Um, so, um, so instead I made like this, I still had some, a bit of space on the sprite sheet. Like, actually, there's still a lot of space on the sprite sheet left, so that kind of felt a bit bad. I kind of want to maybe go back and maybe add some more decorations, uh, because that, uh, I, I have some ways of doing this without, um, without discussing a lot. Um, so yeah, I had some space in the sprite, sprite sheet, so I, um, when you win, you get like the kielbasa image. So I wanted to have something for loose, and that's basically like the, the core illustration or the key graphic that I uh, developed for the release of the game, which is like this um, cute little face of our piggy. I thought it was important because a lot of people thought uh, the uh, character you play as was a dog. Uh, it's not really clear what kind of animal it is. It looks like some kind of animal. I always assumed it was a pig, but that was just me. Uh, so I think it's important to sh actually show a pig uh, to um, 
so players understand what you're actually controlling. This specific illustration is inspired by a Spelunky t-shirt. I'm not sure if it's an official Spelunky t-shirt, but I know there's like a t-shirt where the Spelunky cr cr um, character is there with the crossbones underneath. So it's a blatant ripoff of that. Um, I, it's, a, it's an homage, okay? It's an homage to that. Um, I thought it worked really well in the, with the kind of look I want to go for, like some something more cute-ish. And, 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 and killing a pig is also has a very different connotations in our culture where it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a ham. <laughs> uh, so I thought it, it was fine. So you will get, um, I later on even created like a high resolution um, uh, illustrator graphic for the cover image in the on Ichio because you can play that game on Ichio as well. And of course that will become an, in itself as well a t-shirt. Obviously I have to make this kind of thing as a t-shirt. All right, so this is pork like. Um, I hope you will enjoy it. I hope you will play it. Um, it's available on the um, currently on the itch.io BBS. Oh, wait a minute. It's available on the BBS on Lexalawful and also on itch.io. There we go. Um, it's also playable on mobile devices. Uh, the future of pork like is I I am very tempted to make a um, better version on like Tick80 or something else uh, with um, some of the features that I'm still missing. So like criticism. Oh wait, let's whole thing criticism. This is my, my, my own criticism of pork like so far is mm, I think there's like one or two resources still missing. There's quite often so a place there's often a situation where you are at the stairs and there's not nothing like you got the early, so you still have some time and you have maybe some things in your inventory. And you might want to get more out of the level, you know, like get maybe some treasures, maybe some points. Uh, but there's nothing for you to pick up, right? There's nothing for you in the level. And that's okay. That's a, a feeling that I kind of wanted to have where it's like fighting a monster is not a point. And sometimes you will find yourself in a position where you're like, okay, I defeated all those monsters. Why? <laughs> I didn't win anything, you know? I just like killed a bunch of stuff. And that's actually something I wanted to like emotionally achieve, like to feel the emptiness of defeating monsters and getting nothing from this and realizing that you just did it because things escalated. And then um, being in situations where you have to actually, when you when you stop yourself from entering a room and you realize, wait a minute, do I have to go in there? I actually can just like, you know, grapple out there and disappear. And that would be actually a lot easier and a uh, lot cheaper for me to just, you know, go around the room, not, not to sneak around the monsters. Um, so yeah, that's something I wanted to have, but um, still there is like, I feel, there's still like, um, it would be nice if you could get something out after all. If there was some thing that you could steal, some kind of treasure maybe in some room, so you can maybe get the monster out of the room, uh, get them to follow you, lead them astray, maybe through some kind of void and return that room and get the treasure. Um, the problem, I had that in uh, one of the uh, previous prototypes, I had like just useless uh, coins. It was sausages, obviously, <laughs> but it was coins, uh, like basically money. And you could pick it, pick it up and it, there was no use for it, it just like score. Um, the only problem I had with that is that um, there was no use for it. Like there was no, s it, it felt very empty to pick them up. You didn't feel rewarded for picking them up. Like right now you, the game tracks how many uh, monsters you killed and that was basically, felt the same, like okay, just a number. Um, so if I had, to, if I wanted to implement a f another resource, I would want to also actually think about some kind of use for the resource. For example, uh, a shop where maybe in between the levels you can buy something. I also thought about making a shop where you can maybe sell uh, abilities that you don't want to use, um, so you can like uh, curate your inventory a little better. Um, so these are the ideas that I would maybe get into, like maybe flesh out the world a little bit, introduce characters that are neutral that you can interact with, and um, get some uh, some interesting strategic decisions from them. Uh, again, one resource that is kind of like common that you can pick up, like gold in Spelunky, that you can just, can just collect, you can use uh, extra time that you have to collect it a little bit, and then um, you can use this to get some advantage down the line. Um, and then I think some other kind of resource as well. Um, so like a second resource, because the problem right now is like you have abilities and that allows you to defeat monsters, which gets you more abilities, <laughs> which is kind of like very circular, very, very close, close loop. Um, it would be nice if it was, there was like a way out of that loop in some other direction, right? So um, 
for example, um, maybe bringing back um, some kind of equipment or some kind of relic system would be interesting, like um, say the spire or um, oh, what's what's it called, uh, a binding of Isaac, like something that's some permanent adjustment of how the game works, or maybe some kind of armor that you can wear and that armor has a special effect. So one obvious uh, um, choice here would be like that the armor. Uh, would be prevent blindness, right? So if you wear that, you are no longer blind. Um, uh, but if you do this kind of stuff, then that game has to be a lot more complex because then you might want to think about, okay, if I'm wearing blind armor, I got that on the first floor, I want to maybe have like a choice what kind of enemies I want to encounter. So it's like, if so the strategic decisions, like I wear the armor, I'm now immune to blindness. I might want to go where somewhere where enemies are causing me blindness. So my armor actually uh, gives me some... Um, some advantage so yeah like <laughs> once you add a lot of things like just like it's tiny little ad addition has like a, a, a lot of baggage associated with it so that's why um, the game's more wasn't able to go there in those directions so getting it into tick 80 or some other engine would be interesting to kind of like explore these possibilities um, generally making the levels more richer more interactive the void thing was very very useful that's something that really added a lot to the game um, but on the other hand, I lost a lot of flavor because the abilities are just like, you know, jump, push. They're no longer, previously were like these hilarious names. And in the previous version, um, I had a version that were, all of the abilities were different kinds of food at least. So like, you know, the, the spear ability was, was a skewer. <laughs> Make a skewer out of the enemies. Um, but, um, or like the pole ability was sp spaghetti, so you can like a spaghetti la lasso, whatever. Um, but it just didn't make any sense. It just like was very confusing. The, the game is so reduced visually and you're barely trying to understand what is happening. You cannot even understand if it is you're a pig or a, or a dog. So like eating food to make things happen in the world was like, <sighs> like it was, didn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, I had to re reduce it to like these abstract concepts to like the actual names of the abilities, which means I lost like a lot of um, a, lo a lot of flavor that I was missing uh, already in a previous version, and now I, it's kind of like even less of that there. So it would be interesting to bring that flavor back somehow. Uh, with maybe you know again stone tablets or or NPCs or you know something like this. I do like the. Uh, Vorst Lord. That was a really nice addition. Um, one enemy that you could could uh, I could go, go hog wild on, so to speak. If any questions, let me know in the comments section. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me for such a long time and uh, waiting so patiently for uh, for this game to get released. I'm really happy. I'm really like like I'm riding a high that this is finally released. It's a huge relief. I've been carrying this uh, weight around for a year, and it's finally it's like ah, oh, thank goodness. And uh, feedback so far seems very positive. It has been featured on Itchy on the front page. That was very nice. Uh, there's a second video that I'm going to do, like a follow-up, which I already recorded and just need to edit, which is kind of more of a, a narrative of how, why I actually took so long, how I felt over the, the year. It was a bit of a uh, more personal piece that I want to want to bring out, but that will take some time. Uh, yeah, so again, like if you have any questions, let me know, any, any feedback. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, all right, guys, see you next time around. Bye-bye.